This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento today, joined by Pat Bates, member of the California State Senate, representing significant portions of Orange County. I recently interviewed the author of this book about the men and women of the California State Legislature, and you are one of only five Republican women to have served in both the Senate and the Assembly in the history of California. And I did not know that, Brad, <laughs> right? until you brought that to my attention, so I must get that book. I was going to say... a lot of great facts in there. But I do want to ask you, I mean, look, you're Pat Bates. Right. You're in your own body, but you broke ground. You're a groundbreaker. How does that make you feel? I don't think we think about it that way. You just have a path that you get on, and mine started at, at local government. And one thing led to another, and I had a great connection with my constituents because right. I believe local government was probably the place that we really solved the problems uh, of those that ask us to represent them. So one thing led to another, and here I am. And I think the significance of it is yes. the fact that there's only been five. Yeah. And Out of 39 I, total. Total. And I do believe a better balance is required for good political discourse. Mm. So I continue to work mentoring and encouraging young women who have uh, chosen to follow Republican principles or mm -hmm. at least embrace uh, the core principles. I understand. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, we have an opportunity to debate those. Right. I think very important for both parties. So that uh, continually drives me. And what's interesting is you talk about mentorship. Mm -hmm. The very first woman to serve in the Assembly and the Senate was Marianne Bergerson, a Republican woman from Orange County who acted as a mentor to you. Exactly, and many of our women in Orange mm -hmm. County. Marianne was a friend and encouraged us and actually helped, I think, uh, direct us on what we needed to do. You don't just step out the front door and say, I'm going to run for office. Right, you know, right. She meant it. It's a, it's a real undertaking, and it really involves a, a, a village, if you will. <laughs> uh, truly. And so let's talk about some things that the senator is looking to do um, as we move into uh, the second year of this cycle. Um, you've been talking about crime for some time. And there's a question about Prop 57. Prop 57 passed in 2016, and it provides for more opportunities for parole. Yes. A lot of controversy around it, but it did pass. So be that as it may. Uh, you have some concerns about those that are receiving that ability for parole. I mean, you're not against parole per se, but not talk to a, us about what your issue and your concern may be. Uh, the concern is that the measure itself uh, did not include what are very serious <clears throat> violent felonies, mm -hmm. and that's the area of controversy, that somehow that got missed in the discourse, that got missed in the definition. So my bill, which is SB 75, <clears throat> expands the definition of a violent felony. And we're talking about child molestation, ah. continual sexual abuse of a child, uh, drive-by shooting, exploding a device with the intent to harm. Uh, there are a number <laughs> this of... Is, these are serious. These are very right. serious, and they should have been included. Now, my bill does add 20 uh, violent felonies to the definition. I decided to you know, approach it in a very expansive way, we can narrow it down based on <clears throat> law enforcement who will be testifying as to whether these are things that are of great concern. I will tell you they do believe that the bill is too, um, that Prop 57 was too expansive. Right. I believe the core principle in uh, Prop 57, having been a social worker, I believe oh. people have an opportunity and should have an opportunity to rebuild their lives if they make a wrong step here or there. But we have to take into consideration that some people are sociopaths, very small percentage, I think it's less than 8%, but some of those are not covered in terms mm -hmm. of keeping them confined until they actually can be rehabilitated. Those are the ones we have to be very concerned about. I want to broaden out the discussion a bit, if I may, because what happened in November to me was fascinating. We have Prop 57 passing which, let's say, a very progressive measure in the criminal justice reform movement. And then we have the death penalty measure that failed. The mm -hmm. repeal of the death penalty, which everyone presumed would happen, it failed. And so there's almost like, you know, a schizophrenia. I don't want to say right. sociopath, but you know, yeah. there's a schizophrenia. On the one end, California says, no, we want our death penalty. Red states are re repealing death penalty all over the place. And yet, we want to allow folks to get out earlier. 
What do you make of that as a student ah. of government? Yeah, as a student yeah, of government, right. and maybe right. at times we are all a little schizophrenic. Right, I hear you. So right. I, I think it's a very strong message regarding public safety and what people feel uh, is of great concern to them. When you see some of the crimes that were committed by individuals who were released from mm. a prison early, uh, three strikes was generated because of right. that. They want to make sure that those folks who do these heinous crimes are not back out on the streets mm -hmm. to repeat them. And this particular Prop 57, well-intentioned, a lot of compassion, and isn't it great our Californians care about things like that, but they do have a line in the sand, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, so I wonder if Pro, uh, SB 75, your bill, is on the other side of that line mm -hmm. and therefore starts to garner support, yeah. kind of grassroots. Have yeah. you spoken with your friends on the Democratic side about the bill? Uh, not at this point. Okay. We've just got the language. But I have had uh, a number of conversations with groups in Orange County and San Diego, in particular mm. Moms uh, United, Moms Organized, and uh, when they learned about the child molestation mm. issue, mm -hmm. Uh, very, very concerned and wish that that had been addressed because they voted for it, like right. many did. Right. So. Let's talk about the GPS monitoring <laughs> bracelets, mm -hmm. which uh, folks believe have been a f an effective tool. Yes. Um, problem is, is that some of the folks that are putting or that are being required to have the GPS bracelets are taking them off. Yes. As we speak today, Senator, is there a criminal consequence for taking it off? Is it a, an infraction, a misdemeanor, a felony? Uh, it's basically you return to county jail. Uh, maximum would be a year. Generally, it's 30 days. In fact, the individuals who basically were my reason for getting involved right. in, in Orange County, you're probably very aware of the situation with Stephen Gordon and uh, Mr. Kano. He, he's coming Remind up for us. trial. Uh, they um, cut off their GPS bracelets, mm -hmm. they uh, found each other, and were captured, uh, apprehended mm -hmm. again, had to have the bracelets back on, or in county jail for that minimum sentence, uh, GPS uh, bracelets back on them, and then they went on a killing spree. Mm -hmm. Stephen, in his testimony, said, the, the, the system failed me. And I do believe if they had uh, had the enhanced sentence that my bill requires, SB they would have had to go back to not county jail, but mm. state prison. So and it would be three years minimum. Mm. And during that time, I believe what Mr. Gordon might have been saying, if the system had intercepted us, we wouldn't have linked up, this wouldn't have happened. So I think there's a better argument on this round because Last um, session, I introduced it. It got all the way to the governor's desk with only one no vote. He did veto it. His reasons for vetoing it, we have to discuss that, was prison overcrowding right. and putting people back in. Right. But when you have someone who uh, who's testifying, asking for the death penalty, and then blaming the system for what he did because he wasn't apprehended earlier, no but, interception right. earlier, I think there's this very strong argument for but this. But we also, <clears throat> with Prop... 47, yes. which uh, decreases some of the penalties mm -hmm. for some f uh, offenses, and 57, parole, we don't really have a prison overcrowding crisis anymore. It is significantly reduced. Right. Arguably. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, and those numbers are coming out. I, I think it's important, Brad, to focus on the fact that these are violent sexual right. offenders. But I'm wondering if you can say, uh, Governor, I understand your concerns about prison overcrowding, but right. the numbers indicate we don't have that issue now. Right, and this is the individual kinds of individuals that right. need to go back into mm -hmm. uh, a longer sentence and back into prison, not okay. county jails. Her name is Pat Bates. She is a member of the California State Senate, the fifth Republican woman <laughs> to serve in both the Assembly and the Senate you in call California. Me number five. <laughs> I like it. I'm Brad Pomerantz coming to you from Sacramento. It's Local Edition.